So recently, one of my group members asked me if I had a list that people can use to help them pack their bags when they are relocating. Then I was like, no, I don't have a list. Let me see. Ish. Because she said she had gotten a list and that she just wanted to see if there's anything else or something that she can um, add or remove. I said, okay, send me the list. And when I looked at the list, I was like, oh my goodness, what is all this? You don't need all this. And it, the list, the list was really long. And I'm like, first of all, do you know your baggage allowance for most of these flights? And I was like, okay, maybe I might have to do something about that. Maybe write a list. Then, um, recently another group member was asking if she could carry sniper uh for those that are not in nigeria sniper is like a toxic um chemical that is used for insect infestation and the rest or yeah insect infestation um pest pest control that's what i'm saying pest control but it's a very very toxic chemical and i was like you want to carry a toxic chemical on a flight cross border uh, why and if it's like somebody um says she should bring that like, the person wants to use that like in my own opinion i would tell you no do not carry it it's a toxic chemical and you might be carrying something that the government does not want you to carry that is a that is flaunting the immigration rules so i decided to do this video so that people can know what to carry what not to carry what you should not even try taking and what you can take and so if you want to know what you can relocate with as an international student to the uk please keep on watching I'm everybody's type, but nobody can deny. Cause yes, you know I get it, get it. Now, 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 anybody go on? I'm getting freaky. Yeah, yeah, I'ma break the crazy. Get that freaky, freaky on. Get that freaky, freaky on. Get it right, get it right. Get that freaky, freaky. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Omomi, aka Petit Diva. And I am a University of Nottingham alumni and also a Developing Solutions Scholarship Award winner. In these educational videos, I talk about the UK admission process. I talk about the UK student visa application process. I also talk about tips and tricks on how to enjoy your stay as an international student. And I also talk about tips and tricks on how to earn more money as an international student. So if you like videos such as this and you are not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing by clicking on the red button that says subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell notification icon by the side so that you notify anytime I upload videos. Now before we continue with this video, I just want to remind you that I offer some UK educational services. And right now, the only UK educational services that I'm off is the UK admission package. Now, the UK admission package comprises of me curating courses and school that best fit you. Writing SOPs for the courses that you've chosen. Also writing an academic CV to increase your chances of getting an offer and then apply so that your application is as smooth as possible. Previously, I used to offer some SOP alone writing services and academic CV alone writing services. But right now, because I am transitioning from the September intake application to January intake application, I am only concentrating on the admission package. So I'm not applying for September courses anymore. Please note. Um, I am now concentrating on January 2024 applications. So if you want to use my admission package services, please check the description box for my email address. When you are sending me an email, please send me your documentation so that I can review you and know if you fit into my clientele. Now, I only have two admission package and it depends on the profile of the client. So when I look at the profile, I would determine the one that best fits you um, based on all that you are, that's based on your educational background and work experience. My services are not free. It costs above 120,000 Naira. So please note, if you cannot afford it, you can watch my videos and try and apply by yourself. Now, if you can afford it, please send me a mail 
and send me all your documents now you can also join the telegram group the telegram group is where it is now for january applicants there is a different telegram group now the september um applicants i am closing that group to new members if you can find the link fine if you cannot find the link please join the january um, group because um the sec for the september group most are paying for their tuition fee therefore since most have already gotten offers so the discussion that we are having in the group is how to um have a successful visa application how to relocate properly and the rest now if you are a september um applicant you already have an offer um you can check some of my previous videos you will find the telegram group to that group and you can join now if you are a a January applicant and you want to use my services please join the appropriate um, telegram group and then you can send me a message now when you join the group for both groups you will be restricted for a while so that you can catch up with the messages that have been shared in the group or the content that has been shared in the group and then you'll be able to know what to do without even asking so much questions now the link to the group will be in the description box so you can check that out now with all that said let's get into this video now for those who are relocating in september i know some of you are already hyper um there are some things you can carry there are some things you should carry there are some things you should not carry and there are some things that you might carry that might make you end up on the offenders list or you might be delayed at the point of entry so now i'm just going to talk about some of them i'm sure there are extra things that um you might want to add but this is just like a basic basic things those are the most important things that you should carry any other thing is just extra remember most flights have baggage allowance now i think for qatar is 23 kg above 23 kg you go pay and heavily because those people don't joke with their money. One kg above, you will see the amount you'll be going, eh? And then also remember that you might have um, um, allowance for your hands-on luggage, what you are going to enter the flight with. Um, but there's, there's also a limit. Some, some airlines will say 7 kg. Above 7 kg, they will not allow you. Things you should carry with you um, as hands-on luggage, your documents, very important you cannot put it in the baggage whatever uh it has to be with you because at the point of entry some of those documents you'll be required to show um your laptop you cannot put your laptop in the other luggage i don't even know what it's called because some people are crazy you'll find out later so let's get into some of the other things that you should carry apart from your documents your laptop and the rest the things you should carry number one is food 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 yes international students carry your local food oh. <laughs> carry your local food because it gets as it be when you arrive um personally i'll say carry them because you are so used to your local food when you arrive you might not really like a lot of the uk foods no matter how creative or adventurous you might be you might not really like it in the first few weeks so your local food will help stabilize you one it will also help you save money for some things it will also help with homesickness yes um so i would say carry local foods carry your local spice and nigeria we have our pepper curry time blah 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 some of those things you might later find that uh, we have to get them but they are very expensive um i know indians like their masala and curry turmeric like nigerians um so carry those things but when you are carrying food remember it has to be dry it cannot be wet so you cannot carry snail in fact some countries will not allow you to carry kilishi that's the um, beef jerky or dried um, beef everything has to be dry um and then it should not really stink i know some people can carry iru that's local beans but they will dry it that like, it will be so dry and then find ways to make sure that it doesn't smell um palm oil people carry palm oil but i've had a relative try to carry palm oil to a country and um um 
it was not possible because <laughs> they said you cannot carry up more. Some people, they, I know they will freeze it. It will be so blocked, like really um, solid and then wrap it and then be able to carry it. But some countries, by when, you ask, when they are scanning it, come, 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 come back, remove it. So please don't carry things that would uh, delay you. Also, um, for Nigerians, please, if you eat Indomie, no doos. Please carry your noodles. The UK no do is disgusting. I mean, I'm saying it from my own personal view. When I wanted to be adventurous, I saw noodles. I said, let me buy because I think the, uh, the noodles that I came with that finish. I said, let me buy, let me try. My flatmate looked at her. She said she was a Nigerian and she had done a, a, a previous study in the UK. So she was like, mm, you bought this thing. Okay. I was like, what does she mean? Cooked one like this. I threw the rest. I didn't even finish the one I cooked. It was disgusting. So please carry your look on. <laughs> carry Indomie. Uh, either it's Indomie, Chiki, uh, Golden Penny, anyone that you like. Because the one you may see, you may not like it. Also, there's no need to take pasta. In my own opinion, there's no need to take rice. You might want to take your father rice, but remember all those things are heavy. You might want to take beans. Bean flour, yam flour, all those flours you can take. Um, personally, I would say take um, salt. And why I say take salt is because the salt in UK, most of them are not fortified. In Nigeria, because of um, nutritional diseases, um, there was a policy. And there's a policy that says that um, things like sugar, flour, um, salt are fortified with vitamins and minerals. So you our salt fortified with iodine um, You find sugar with vitamin A and uh, flour with uh, vitamin A Iron and the rest to prevent nutritional diseases For UK most of the brands don't have that fortification vitamin or mineral fortification Which to me as a pharmacist is annoying So I would advise people to bring at least salt so that you don't get goiter um, Seasoning cube, we already know that you might not find seasoning cube Except you go to the African store or Asian store and the price Especially when you arrive, when you are converting everything to your local currency, we give you punch. Because by the time you see, oh, one pack of Maggi, probably 1,000 naira, then you get to the UK, you see one pack of Maggi, um, three pounds or four pounds, and you say, hey, at one, one pound equal, uh, 920. Eh? Why? Two eight. Hey, this. Uh, remember, um, food must be dry or packaged no wet things so no wet leaves no um, wet fish even fish if it's not stock fish or crayfish please leave it before they drag you somewhere and say oh you have to um, drop it and if they see some things they will still find you so you will lose what you brought and still get a fine so take note the next thing you should take um, is clothes now clothes you have to calm down. Um, the list that, that my that one of the group members sent me, I saw all kinds of clothes. I'm like, for what? Please limit your clothes to a few t shirts or shirts, a few trousers or jeans or skirts for those that don't wear trousers. Um, very small amount of traditional wear because at the end of the day, you might not wear it until spring or summer because for those that are arriving in September, you're arriving in autumn. Cold has already started. For those of you that are coming from the tropic, you would feel the cold, except you have a, a bit of body and body fat, you might not really feel it. But at uh, August, September is already getting cold. October, you're entering winter. Nobody go see your traditional way. You go be wearing, you will be wearing trousers, jacket, like as if no, because of the cold. So there's no need to carry a lot of um, traditional wear. Um, for those that are uh, arriving in September for the September courses, you're supposed to also try and get a jacket from your home country. Not light jacket, but not too thick, because autumn jacket is a bit lighter than those that are required 
for winter now if you are a january starter if you are intending to arrive in the uk around december january it will be full-blown winter so you should get a winter jacket not autumn jacket if you don't know the difference please google it you will see the the winter jackets are always puffed up then the autumn ones are really a bit lighter but thicker than um cardigan that you use in nigeria and that is for clothes now for the t-shirt and the jeans and the trouser why i say just take a small amount by the time you get into the uk you will find cheaper or better um clothes at a cheaper price because there's a primark h&m and the rest that you can get even secondhand boutique previously um owned boutique you will find a lot of clothes that are equally good so there's no need to pack um, those things that you can easily find in the uk now the third thing will be toiletries now i'm going to say this as a female and as a female with quirks um for me um if you are relocating to a new place i would say carry a few months like three months or four months um supply of your very very personal um hygiene items like pads now i'm saying this for from my own point of view now for me i don't use a lot of brands of pads i have like three or two specific brands that i use now before getting accustomed to a new place and their brands of pads um i would for my peace of mind and not to have issues i like to have at least three months supply so that while trying to uh, get accustomed to the brand and looking for the one that um is appropriate for me that doesn't give me allergic reaction and can do what it's supposed to do at least i have um a fallback from my local brand and if towards the end of <laughs> the three months or four months and i see that i've not yet found an appropriate brand i start looking for how to get my local brand fortunately for me it did not happen i found a brand that i could substitute my local brand with but i'm just just giving why i say um get three months or four months supply of your personal items before you get used to things some people they use anything so eh, they can do anyhow but people like us that one thing we use next thing we'll be carrying all kinds of medicine trying to resolve the issues so that is why i recommend that with deodorant and the rest you don't really need to carry a lot of those things because uk is where everything is but you can just carry for like a month or two all those things at least the first few months you won't be buying a lot of things um, at the UK price now I would recommend one thing that you should carry as an African I'm going to talk about this as an African other international students sorry what I would um advise that you carry is share butter yes share butter Ori. yes carry it too because during the and transition from autumn to winter because we are coming from where we are coming from apart from the other africans that experience winter and the rest um we nigeria we experience our time so we know about dry skin and the rest but there's a thing that winter does to your skin if you are not used to the weather um i was using my lotion fortunately for me when i arrived in the uk i had i i don't know why i took okay i know why i took i took um i carried shea butter not for my skin but for my hair um then the whole winter came and my skin was looking so scaly i was afraid i was like what is going on and i told a friend of mine who had been there for like two years and she was like it's the winter that i should use ori and that's a shea butter so i whipped my shea butter but i didn't whip it the way it's supposed to be whipped for winter i whipped it for um hot climate and it was still solid but i you know with shea butter when you apply it to the palm of your hands and you rub and generate um body it it will melt so i did that and then i added a bit of lotion 
to the shear water because the lotion has a bit of moisture based on the water content so i mixed that anytime i wanted to apply uh, on my body after bath and within two weeks after i saw the skeleton and i was like oh my god it was back to freshness so um i would highly recommend that you take shea butter especially as a black african because when the thing comes when the winter comes okay your skin might react in a way that it's not appropriate and not looking uh fresh um but when you do my trick and use the shea butter whipped shea butter or just plain shea butter your skin should get back to um juiciness and then she gets glowing and looking healthy so that's one thing i would recommend take shea butter okay so now the next thing i am going to talk as my capacity as a pharmacist and it is to take drugs now me i am a pharmacist like i said i i get to be super imaginative of so many things i'm thinking what if i have this what if i have that what if i have this what if i have that so while i was relocating i took drugs and i'm at liberty to take drugs because okay we got the license um but i'm going to talk about the drugs in the context of how those are non-professional non-healthcare professional or non-pharmacist or non-doctors can um take the first thing i would recommend for those in endemic um, malaria endemic places is to take a prophylactic um anti-malaria dose so please try to take one full dose of an anti-malaria like a week or some days finish it like a week or some days before you relocate and this is because if you fall ill with malaria in the uk you will be treated like as if you have covid 19. you will be isolated